In this video, I'm going to be taking you through how to get NES set up with RetroArch with an emphasis on which cores you should be using. This video and all the videos in this series are going to be split into two sections. Essential setup, which is what we objectively need to do to get everything working, and then enhancements, which is more subjective user to user. So if you're here just to get everything set up as quick as possible, you can follow along with the essential setup and then bail, but I do recommend you stay around for the enhancements to find out how we can make these games look a little bit better. With the essential setup, we're going to be covering cores, controls, and the fallback setup, which I'll explain at the time. And with enhancements, we're gonna be covering color palettes, overclocking, cropping over scan, and removing the sprite limit. If you're brand new to RetroArch, you will need to get things initially set up. So follow along with this video here that I fully endorse and I'll pop the link in the description below. And once you've done that, come back here. Firstly, we need to download our cores. So open up RetroArch and then go into the online update and then go into the core downloader. And then we need to scroll down quite a lot of the way. So keep going, keep going, keep going. There we go. So as of recording this video, there are only four cores available. FCEUM, Messen, Nestopia UE, and QuickNES. Now, which one of these cores is best to use? And unfortunately, that isn't just a cut and dry answer, and it will change depending on who you ask. Now, straight out the gate, I can tell you that QuickNES has the worst compatibility. Now, Messen is the most accurate but it is the most resource heavy. So if you have a lower end machine, you might notice some frame drops. Now, most people seem to use Nestopia UE and FCEUMM. The compatibility for these three cores is fantastic. However, their accuracy does vary. So to answer the question of which core is the best core, all of them. So I'm gonna download all four of these and use a fallback system. So if I notice the emulation is a little bit off with a certain game, I can restart that game with a different core and see how that gets on. If I had to rank these cores in any particular order, I would do so like this, but please be aware this is just my personal opinion. So I've got Messen at the top. I tend to use that as my default NES emulator. Now I do this because it's the most accurate and also it has a function that I find invaluable. Then I would use Nestopia if I found the emulation wasn't to be that accurate with Messen, then FCEUM, then QuickNES. If your machine isn't good enough to actually run Messen, then the order would still be the same. I would have put Nestopia and FCEUM at a joint second. However, a lot of people do report that the audio emulation is better with Nestopia. So if audio was my priority, I may have even put Nestopia above Messen. So you can see how subjective this can get. So we need to quickly address the elephant in the room. NES games were really janky. And sometimes it's really difficult to tell if the emulation is off or if it's just an NES game being an NES game. And unless you're intimately familiar with the game that you're playing or you have something to compare it to, you're not gonna notice if the emulation is slightly off if the audio is half an octave out or if there is a couple of pixels in the wrong location. For the most part, any one of these emulators on its own is gonna cover most of the library. It's when we start to get to the fringes of the NES library that emulation and compatibility starts to get a bit spotty with these emulators. So things like four player compatibility, ROM hacks, prototypes, unlicensed games, so because I want to know that I can play the entire NES library with no issue, armed with four cores, I know at least one of them is going to be able to play the game that I want in the way that I want. So we're just going to download all four cores. There we go. Now we need to add our ROMs to RetroArch and set our default core. So I'm just going to back out of this and we're going to go all the way over to the right hand side to the plus symbol. Now from these three options, I always suggest manual scan. So select that one. And content directory is where our ROMs are located. So we're gonna go into this one. And I've just got these right there. So you can put these wherever you'd like. And then we're gonna select scan this directory. There we go. Now system name, obviously we want this to be Nintendo Entertainment System. So there it is, select that one. And then now we want to set our default core. 
So set your favorite one from this list here. Mine's Messin. And don't forget that if you have your ROMs in zip files, you will need to activate this setting here. So that's what I've done. So I'm gonna activate it and then we're gonna select start scan. There we go, scan complete. So let's back out of this, go over to the right and there are our games. So from here, we're just going to select any game. And if we scroll down, you will see set core association and reset core association. So by default, obviously this is running with Messen, but I can get this game to run in a different core if I just wanted to start straight up with that specified core. So set core association. So let's say I want this to be FCEUM instead. So I'm going to select that one. Now if I back out, and go to the entry, you can see that in the information section, it actually specifies which core you're using for it. So if it's blank, it means that it's using the default core. And if it's specified, it means that it's using that one specifically. So let's do that for Cheetah Men 2. Let's say, for instance, I want this to run with QuickNES instead. Let's back out. There we go. We can see that one says QuickNES and that one says FCEUM. If you ever want to revert back to the default emulator, just reset core association and you can see that it's removed that core association. As far as I can tell, the only way to get a choice of cores when starting up a game is to go over to load content, find the ROM that you want to load, and then it will ask you which core you want to use. But if you don't want to do it that way, you'll just have to change the core association in this list here. Now that we've got all of our cores sorted out and a fallback system in place, we can take a look at some controls. And as long as you've done your initial setup correctly, there's only one thing that we need to do. And this is because B and A are actually in the wrong place. So all of these cores have this same option. So I'm just gonna start up again. And then I'm gonna go into the quick menu and go into the core options. And we want to find the shift a, B, X and Y clockwise and activate that. So now A and B are going to be in the correct place. So let's just back out of that, go back to the game and you can play the game with correct controls. And that's everything that we need to do for our essential setup. So from here, you can just play some games and switch cores if you need to. But now we're gonna cover the enhancements and this is the fun stuff. Let's start with color palette. So I'm just going to start Rad Racer with FCEUM. Just going to run that. I'm just going to start the game just so we've got some graphics on the screen. And then I'm going to go into the quick menu and then down to core options. All of these cores have a changeable color palette. So let's just go into video. And there we go, color palette. So at the moment it's set on default, but I quite like the CXA option. So we're going to select that, go back to the game, and you can see that it bumps the saturation and increases the contrast, which is what I like. But some of you out there might be going, you absolute monster. So let's see what else is available. So let's just go to PAL, for instance, back to the game. And you can see that does different things to the colors. So you're going to want to go through these and find which one you prefer. Let's move on to overclocking. Now, Quickness doesn't actually have an option for overclocking. So I'm just going to show you what it does and give you a quick explanation. So I'm just going to start up Bible Buffet with Messen. So I'm going to start that, go into the quick menu, down to core options, and we've got overclock here. So we've got low, medium, high, and very high. Each core has a different kind of implementation when it comes to overclocking and different kinds of options, but the end result is the same thing. So this came in handy for people that were using things like Raspberry Pis with a low powered CPU and then overclocking it here would actually bring the game up to speed. However, it can also remove any kind of native slowdown from the original game, but it can break some games in the process. So you need to use this on a per game basis and see if it doesn't break any kind of cycles. This is an option that I don't really actually use myself very often. If I come across a game that's got really, really bad slowdown, then I might give it a try. But use this at your own discretion. 
Now let's go over cropping overscan. Now, if you already have this option on already, so if you go to the video options of RetroArch and go into scaling, if you have this option here, the crop overscan already enabled, you're already cropping some of the overscan out. I don't actually leave this option on because I want to be in direct control of what I'm cropping out of my image. And I suggest that you do the same. So I'm gonna leave that off, come back out, and I'm gonna start Rad Racer with Messen specifically. So let's just run that. Let's go into the quick menu and go into the core options. All of these cores have a crop overscan function, but Messen's is by far the best. With the other cores, they'll take pixels from the top and the bottom of the screen or the left and the right of the screen. And that's fine for games like Super Mario Bros. 3, where you'll have the garbled rubbish on both sides of the screen. But if you've only got that on one side of the screen, you don't want to get rid of the pixels that you want to keep on the other. But with Messin, you can change this on all four sides of the image independently. And not only can you do that, you can choose how many pixels that you do it by. With the other cores, they fix this to eight pixels only. So with Rad Racer here, let's just resume the gameplay. You can see at the bottom of the screen, there is quite a lot of wasted space. So let's go back in and we want to go to the bottom over scan and we're going to change it to, let's say eight pixels. Let's try that. So that's sorted it out a little bit. Let's go back. I think we can do a little bit better than that though. Let's just go all the way to 16. And there we go. We've got rid of all of that wasted space, made our image bigger. And this is the function that makes me use Messen the most. Now with the other cores, you can do this by using the scaling feature in RetroArch itself. However, doing so is quite a long winded procedure. So being able to do this at core level is for me so handy. The last thing we're going to cover in today's video is the remove sprite limit option that is available in all of these cores. So I'm just going to start Rad Racer, go into the core options, and we're going to scroll down to remove sprite limit. Now you're going to use these for two reasons only. One is for aesthetics. So sometimes when you get sprite flicker, enabling this will remove that sprite flicker. However, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It removes the sprite limit. So for example, in games like beat em ups, you'll just get flooded with bad guys because there is no sprite limit. So games where the bad guys just keep on respawning, they will just keep on just throwing them at you. So it's actually quite a fun thing to use. So you can take a beat em up, put it on the hardest setting, enable the remove sprite limit, and then you've got an ultra hard beat em up. Use it at your own discretion. If you're using it aesthetically, make sure it doesn't break any other aspects of the game. Apart from that, just have fun with it. There we go. That's how to get NES set up in RetroArch with all of its cores. Hopefully I've managed to save you some time. And if I have, slam me a like and a subscribe. And if you want to stay up to date, hit the notification bell and I'll catch you next time.